little more video on this here. It says have it apart. Stepper motors are awesome. You see how when I move there, this is the neck without the head on it. This is pretty much the middle right there. So when I move here, it tries to always move the head to the middle. Move over here, moves the head that way. Move over here, the head moves that way. Somebody told me it would be cool if the head went a little past and then came back real quick. So I'm experimenting with that. So it goes past and then comes back real quick. So you'll see the effect a little better when the head is attached. Turn this off. And the head, so I got the eyes that glow in there. So you got to be careful with the wires. But I just got them gluing this back in here. It had a ball bearing kind of mount on some plastic and a spring. And then down onto the base of the body. So that this would spin very nicely in the wind to keep it animated. That's how these came. I got them from Amazon. So I just welded like a nut and had to retap it again. Put this little set screw with a little hole in the back. That way I can actually attach this to the shaft of the set screw. I was using tape around it, trying to shim it out and put it on there, but it was slipping over time. So that's what I just got done doing for the last hour. So I'm getting ready to put this back on, but I thought I'd show a little video clips of that. These are my three sensors I added. They'll get kind of glued in place a little better when I'm done. And what I did was kind of just use some heat shrink once I pulled them through so they won't fall back through the hole. And then I put some black just to kind of help keep the light from uh, going through the, the white. So it's kind of, that way it's getting it directional. And that's how it's working. So I'm going to power it on. And it's going to do its... Uh, homing and this is what I want to tell you like with stepper motors you know they all do this when you power them up and you'll hear the clicks and I'm just making it run 900 pulses no matter what and that's what happens when it kind of meets the end it kind of had a couple extra pulses but you put enough that way it will always home from the furthest opening and so I have it homing and then going to the middle position to start. And then it's kind of looking at these sensors. It's averaging the light. And then if I put a shadow, it knows. So if a pigeon comes walking by as the idea, it's going to bump the head. Always move the head to, to that position. After it moves the head, it's going to slowly just pulse left and right, left and right. So that's why the position's going 823, 822, 821. It's just pulsing down. And then it's, when it gets to the end, it turns around and starts going the other way. Real slow with those eyes, the beady eyes flashing. And over here. So when pigeons walk by, pigeon walks by over here, it'll turn the head there. So as I do this, I have to keep calibrating how many pulses it is. So it looks like it's be about a thousand pulses now from left to right, now that I have the extended head movement. So writing to it, looks like it just finished. So it should do its homing thing here in a second. There we go. Thousand pulses to home. And it's, you yeah. know, and then if I go 500, it should be right about in the middle after it uh, finishes homing here. Right there. Yep. Right smack in the middle, 500 pulses, so it's about 1,000. So going 1,000 this way, then back to 950. Going to zero over here, and then back to 50. Over here going to 550. And like I said, back to 50. If it's over here, then it's going to go to 450 and back to 50. So it looks like I got, oh, I didn't adjust the center quite perfectly yet. Okay, a little more calibrations, put the head on there. And we're going to test it. Now the center one is kind of aimed at my black shirt. So I noticed that the light level, you could see it's 73, 30, 76. Um, that is 8-bit value, 0, 255. I noticed when I held a flashlight right on there, a bright one, it went up to like 220, 230. So... Outside, it'll be probably close to that. But here, with it kind of in the room, we got the light on and the, and the monitor's on back there. So it's reflecting into those two sensors. But this front one is kind of messed up. So got the pause, I think, about right for somebody said to like make it overshoot and then come back like a real owl. Stupid dogs are barking. I don't know. Pretty cool. I'm going to let it go for now. It's going to be it for tonight, and then I'll continue on tomorrow. So today I've got the owl working pretty good so far with the sensors. Still loose right there in the stepper motor. So I'm installing a motor in the back to have its little impeller wing thing that's going to spin when I want it to scare the pigeons every 15 minutes or so. So I took the motor out of this other contraption right here. 
just drilled some holes Got a little o-ring on here and then i'm going to mount this into the back here right there like so okay so i got the motor stuck in the back and I cut off the other impellers i had on there so very basic now just for testing and then i'll put some foil on there that way it catches their eye when it reflects the sun with any available light <laughs> when the sensors are active i thought of a good idea for those sensors and that is i need to put up a camera you know an outdoor one on the roof tied into my security system and it's going to serve as two things one thing it's going to be able to let me see this owl <laughs> anytime i want to check it out and I could probably turn on the motion, whatever, and record and know whenever, you know, something went in that spot and the owl went active. And the second great thing about that is the uh, cameras have infrared on them. So if I put it kind of here facing at the owl, the infrared, you know, that way the motion sensor works, you know, at night also. <laughs> so if a little pigeon, you know, comes walking along. You know, to take a look at the owl, it's going to get shit scared out of him. The next thing I need to do now is, now I didn't think of it when I made the board, I did not put in the circuit here any provisions for an output for the motor. Although, I do have the end switch I'm not using, and then these tether ports are going to, I just call J1, J2, just a standard names of those single pin ports like a jumper so there were set up as inputs right now i had j1 and j2 i was using for switch inputs just to kind of manually move the head so right now if i ground either one of those inputs it'll actually move the head in one direction or the other depending on which one i do i did that originally when i was messing around with the stepper motor but now actually i don't need that function and then the in switch i was when it homes <laughs> sometimes that thing's pretty sensitive so when it homes, it just dead ends and then does the full count, just like most, you know, things you guys are used to, stepper motors inside EXVs and stuff like that. They don't have feedback. They just drive the full count it would take from close to open, and then it starts at zero and counts away from there. If it gets off because it's sticking or anything happens, well, it doesn't know. <laughs> so you're just screwed. Same thing here. The head, the owl home doesn't have feedback. It just does a full count so it knows it got to home, and then it zeroes it. And that's what they do on boot up anytime you reset the power. Because anytime you turn the power on off back on, you don't know where it is. So that's how it knows. Um, so I'm going to have to go in here on the programming. And up here, to support B, I have uh, bits 0, 1, and 2 set as inputs. And then I have the uh, weak pull ups turned on. So a port B in this chip has weak pull-ups, which basically is your pull-up resistors built in. They're real weak, but they'll do it. So when I turn those on, turn that as inputs on, set those bits as weak pull-ups, those, bit, those uh, pins are actually pulled up to 5 volts for you internally. Really high resistance, but it holds it up. That way, when you add switches, you don't need to pull up uh, pull-up resistors. Which, well, I didn't put switches on this, but on my other projects, kind of see it. Uh, no switches. You're just you just got an open switch, so it just grounds those pins, and that's all it takes. That's how that logic level. And then in your code, you just need to remember um, that when you ground it, when you change the bit from a one to zero, the zero is active. You know that you pressed. That's how you you know pressed it. So for that stuff to work, I got the interrupt on change set for those three bits, and then interrupt. You know. Um, configure and all that stuff set up control and then the uh turning on the port b interrupt enable after it gets done doing all this stuff and then it's away it goes so right now it's looking at those three inputs and anytime you do a an interrupt routine gets handled which here's my interrupt service routine um it's saying you know going to turn off the enable bit you know so it can't enable, <laughs> trigger it again while it's doing this and then it's going to check the flags and when it my, I have it going to this little subroutine, which is to check inputs. So if my port B number one was a zero, because you grounded it, right? Then it's going to do this. I just have it generating a pulse out to the uh, motor, the stepper motor driver. And then if I push the other one, it changed directions and did a pulse. So that's how I was able to pulse it manually. 
And then when it's done with that, doing that once, you clear the flag, turn the enable back on, and out of the service routine and function, here it goes. So I'm going to turn all this stuff off. So instead of deleting it, all I'll do is hit Control Shift C, and it comments it all. And it just, it's still here in my uh, overall uh, project, if you want to say it. But when you hit compile, it just doesn't compile that into the software. So right now, I have that stuff turned on with no interrupt service routine. So I'm going to go ahead and remark out. I like just to remark a lot of things instead of uh, deleting them. Because a lot of times, I uh, just copy stuff over to new projects or a slightly different project. And everything I already have typed out, I'll have to just go up and change things. Like right now, we're going to turn these inputs off. So the tri-state register B, oh, I did the wrong one. We're going to go down here and change it to zeros. None of them are going to be inputs anymore. Now, I could just keep the one as an input that was the going to be the end switch, but I won't. I'm going to turn that off. We'll go ahead and turn off the weak pull-ups. You really don't want those really on because <laughs> they'll just be pulling up against a latched something that's going to be a zero sometimes, sometimes a one. It just could cause issues, so you don't want to do that. And then interrupt and change. Definitely don't need that turned off. I probably could have left all this stuff or these two things, and it just this there was I didn't have a interrupt service routine, so I wasn't gonna do anything. But these flags were still gonna be it's gonna be setting it up to use those in the chip, so that should be everything. So with that, this should be off, and now I could just go up to the top. I'm gonna redefine, like say my motor, right? <laughs> we'll add a. Define motor and that's just what I'm calling it. And that was gonna be what was that? Register B um, J1. Uh, let's use J1. I think that was RB1. Okay, so that was one. So now that's that. And all I have to do is add to my. Uh, Scare, so you, I used to have blinking LEDs. This is the program I was using on that. I'm gonna write this function over to use the motor. Probably pulse the motor a few times or something. And it's just, whenever my timer elapses, I'm gonna want that motor to spin. And I might have it do it at the tail end after the head turns. Turn the head in and bzzz, buzz that motor once. Who knows, you want, you want to scare the shit out of pigeons. But you don't want to have this thing too active all the time. Because I don't want them to get comfortable around it. And I think that's what happened. So I wanted a little uh, kind of a react to the pigeons as much as possible. Okay, just dumped in the modified code. Should be set. Did screw up. I started writing the code after I hooked that wire up. And then uh, I didn't put the code in there. And when I hooked the wire up, it started acting all sorts of crazy. Well, the problem was I was still an input after I soldered on this connection and plugged it in. And that kind of had me thinking something was wrong with this MOSFET driver. Just a little cheap Amazon one, but, you know, can't even build them for these costs. So I just added code that after it does the little head jerk to then go over and pulse that motor a few times. I don't know if I'm going to leave it that way, but I'll just quickly put it there. In the function that way I could test it so I'm gonna add some foil for the looks but for right now it's just got that thing back there so if it turns it's gonna kind of pulse that actually sounds pretty cool so I have it on for like 200 milliseconds and off for 400 milliseconds so it's just pulsing the motor that motor stays on it freaking roars pretty good <laughs> So now, of course, when I put the foil on there, it adds load because it's swinging that through the air, which has mass. So it moves, but it's quiet. So I'm going to try to turn the on time up just a little bit to get allow the motor a little more speed. Okay, 400 milliseconds on time instead. Let's see what happens. That still doesn't get up to speed very well. All right, let me change that a little bit. Okay, so I had the current limited. It was hitting the current limit, so I turned it up. That was more current. Actually, it has a little side effect of a noise. A little knock sound to it. 
turn that up just a little bit more. That's probably about right. So I'm gonna try turning the time back down. I got it at 800 milliseconds, and it repeats like eight times. So 800 milliseconds on, 400 milliseconds off. Repeated eight times. That's definitely takes a little bit of time. Let me uh, try adjust that a little more. All right, that's actually uh, pretty good right here. 400 milliseconds on, 300 millisecond off. Repeats that eight times, so it's just a little burst of the motor. Uh oh, just flap its scary wings. I think the pigeon should notice that they get around that thing. <laughs> that is funny. I mean, it's crude. I didn't put any effort in a little spinning thing. It doesn't need to be. It's going to be up on the roof. It's just a spin around. Yeah, get the pigeon's attention. And uh, make them fly away. So now i got to just reenact the timer. And you see there, got the timer in there. Okay, well... Seems to be working. I've let it run for a while. So we're about ready to disconnect this and shove it up inside the bird's behind there. And just have the 12-volt uh, power cables hanging out. The uh, LCD will no longer need to be on there. So these messages here will be sent out to nobody <laughs> it's just for fun so yep take that off now that's just like I said for debugging and let's see you can leave those on there just have to probably bundle it up or something keep everything connected and tuck it up in there well hopefully I never have to take that apart again I just took some old Gorilla Glue Gorilla Glue that had almost a full caulking tube of it that I just used a little bit of, and it, I don't know. I was able to take the end off and get to the soft stuff, but it must be kind of frozen down here. It took a lot of pressure with the trigger just to get some out, so I wasn't able to apply it with the caulking gun, so I wound up just squirting some on here best I could and then using a, a glove and slathering it on made it a little more messy than I wanted. So I need to let that skin over on the outside and then I'll have to put some more, some sealant here, JB Weld or something when I drop the head on. Just want to keep the wires out of that until it skins over. What's up guys, up in my attic, my own attic, my two air handlers are. But this time I'm actually up here to look for a way to get power up on the roof for the scare pigeon. So I'm seeing light to the outside right here. So I'm thinking there's gotta be some sort of cap out there. And by the light switch, I think there's outlets and there is. So I think as long as I pull up some high, high voltage, low voltage wiring, Probably poke it up in there. I'm betting I can go on the roof and grab it. Yeah. So this needs to go up there on that very scary two story rooftop. So this is how scary the roof is. See that side of the roof where I pluck them with the pellets? <laughs> See over here, I can't get to them, they've been desecrating it up here. Ooh, yeah. You ain't gonna like that too much, are you? You ain't gonna like that. You kind of come over here and start looking at the... Oh, what's that? Yeah. Pigeons.
So a little while later, after I got the camera hooked up on top, kind of was watching through the uh, playback on the phone. And all this little skipping is because I was standing someplace where I was still on Wi-Fi, but it was weak. And the phone was waiting to disconnect. But you see, there's a lot of pigeons right there. And I'm like, uh-oh. But I noticed at one point that all of a sudden something happens and right there they just take off. <laughs> so I'm hoping that that's because one of the pigeons went, uh-oh, and one of the others. But then now a couple of them are coming back. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm hoping that, you know, as they kind of get up there that this scare pigeon, kind of what do you call it? It's an owl, but it's a scare pigeon, like a scare crow. It's to scare crow, so this is the scare pigeons. Hopefully that uh, it kind of scares them. I'm kind of thinking I might need to go up there and add a little more to the spinning impeller, the spinning wing, maybe even a little bit more tape so it like kind of slaps the solar panel behind it or something and makes some noise. Maybe even make it wider or something so it just gets their attention a little more. Of course, the more uh, foil I add to that spinning part, the more load it's going to put on the motor. It's not going to spin as fast or make as much noise from the RPMs, but... Yeah, that pigeon just took off. <laughs> Hoping they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> so hopefully it does work. So what I'm doing right here is I'm using a remote control to turn off that outlet power. And then I'm turning it back on, which is going to force the reboot. And it's going to rehome the head. And it's just so I can do that. There is some lag in the video I'm watching, so... When I turn it back on, it's really like one second or so before it does the reboot and rehome. But the video is playing back a little later than that. So I do now wish I put in the code for it to spin the impeller whenever it first boots and homes the head. But I didn't. would have been cool because I could have always made it do that whenever that I wanted to from remote while watching. And then here I'm just kind of using the camera app just while I'm watching up there, just kind of comparing it to, again, the video through the surveillance video. You can see the infrared lights from the surveillance video. Um, there's going to be lag on the left screen just because it's recording and then playing back and going through the app to my phone. You see right there, you can see the beady eyes glowing. Looking at this camera up on the roof, of course, it's on night vision now with a lot of infrared, so you can't see the glow from that camera at night you can see the eyes going back and forth during the day but the camera on the right on the as I'm holding the phone you can definitely see the eyes glowing that's pretty cool so I'm gonna have to let it do its thing for a few days kind of keep an eye through the video surveillance here and see how it goes you can see these pigeons are actually checking it out right now uh, it's like they're actually looking at it so see how it goes. I do have that impeller spinning every 15 minutes no matter what on a timer. So I just recently turned on the recording in my DVR for this. So I'll have to go back and see what happens when an impeller spins. Hopefully it does scare them away. But again, like I said, I'm going to have to go up there and probably add something to that. So it slaps as it spins, maybe a little wider on the foil just to get their attention. Okay. Looking now at the DVR, it's been about an hour of a recording, so all these yellow markers right here is every 15 minutes. And then like this one here and this one here is actually a car driving by, or maybe it's this one or this one. But uh, So every 15 minutes the timer is going to make it spin this little impeller wing thing anyway, regardless of what goes on. Fast forward it just a little bit and you can see it was spinning there. There is a pigeon right here, so it's trying to figure out what the hell... But it didn't run away, so we'll have to see how this goes. But as I said, I'll probably wind up having to add some foil just so it for more visual and just make it a little longer so it slaps or something. Because if it makes a noise, that should hopefully get them out of there. So, and let's see this one down here. I think that's yeah, so it went off there 15 minutes. And then this is just a vehicle setting it off. So each one of these is when the thing was going off on a timer. And then in between, it's just kind of rotating the head. You can see it. Uh, it's going slow. So if I go like the 8x speed, you're going to see 
it moved a little faster, but the time, you know, was going at 8x there. So I want it to go slow, just so they don't get used to it, and then you want it to disturb them. So anyway, that should do it. We'll kind of see how that goes. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. All that stuff. We will catch you guys later.